And welcome to Lunchtime Politics on Channel Television and Minister Walker. On the news this hour, the APC and its deputy governorship candidate filed joint application to reverse the Supreme Court judgment on Bayasa State governorship election. As Senator Degi Eremenyo denies forging certificate. INEC chairman promises sweeping changes for the conduct of Undo, Edo and Undo elections as Commission holds maiden meeting with all states' electoral commissioners today. And Bono said Governor Professor Babagana Zulum in desperate appeal for more soldiers to end the war against insurgency in the Northeast. Welcome everyone to the program. We begin with what appears to be the Supreme Court may witness more calls for a review of its judgments as the ruling All Progressives Congress APC has filed an application asking the court to reverse its decision disqualifying the party's candidate in the last governorship election in Bayelsa State. The party's legal team, headed by Mr. Wali Olanikpeku and Mr. Latif Pagbemi, went want rather the apex courts to set aside what they call the wrong interpretation given to its judgment of February 13, 2020. The party is contending that the Supreme Court misinterpreted the November 12, 2019 judgment of the Federal High Court of Abuja, which it affirmed. They argue that the Supreme Court acted without jurisdiction and denied the party fair hearing when it proceeded to disqualify its governorship candidate, even though the Federal High Court in the judgment by Justice Inyang Ekwo, which the Apex Court affirmed, refused the plaintiff's prayer to disqualify its candidate, Mr. Leon. Well, the APC also faulted the interpretation given to the Supreme Court judgment by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in de deciding to issue a certificate of return to the candidate of the People's Democratic Party. It adds that it was wrong for the Supreme Court to have voted its candidate's participation in the election when the judgment by the Federal High Court disqualifying its deputy governorship candidate was stayed as at when the election was conducted. No date has been fixed for the application hearing. In the meantime, it's not only the All Progressives Congress that is calling for review of the Supreme Court verdict. The party sacked Deputy Governor-elect in Bayelsa State, and its Obiobarakuma Degiri Menyo is also heading back to the Apex Court. He insists that the Apex Court never gave him an opportunity to defend his educational qualifications before concluding that they were forged. He, however, wants the police to investigate the allegations of forgery. The event of my disqualification is distressing and traumatized to me personally. And of course, a greater trauma inflicted on my party, the governorship candidates, and the good people of Bayelsa states who signified their voice, sorry, their choice of who should be their governor and deputy governor. It is this unsolicited assault on my personality and reputation by the judgment in question that has constrained me to chart this cause of action. Let me start by saying that I condemn in strong terms all forms of forgery, impersonation, or criminality in any form by the political class, and I have never been associated with same. All the educational qualifications I presented to the Independent National Electoral Commission to aid my constitutional qualification were acquired by me personally from institutions here in Nigeria, which fortunately for us, all are still in existence till date. The records are verifiable any time, any day here in Nigeria. 
For more perspectives on the Bayelsa Supreme Court verdict and the All Progressives Congress application for reversal, we have joining us from our Buja studio, Mr. Blessing Kingdom and also Mr. Alfonome Eno. They are both legal practitioners. We'd like to thank you both for joining us at this time. First, I'd like to ask you, uh, Mr. Kingdom, uh, as a legal practitioner, what precedent is being set uh, with the request for reviews now before the Apex Court? Uh, would you say it's good for our democracy or is it not? Thank you for having me, Millicent. Um, I would say there, is, there are a lot of precedents and uh, instances where the Supreme Court has reviewed itself. But um, again, even if there were none, you can say because nothing has been done, so something shouldn't be done where there is a necessity for something to be done, as it is in this case. As long as... Um, an application for review has been filed before the Supreme Court. In their wisdom, if they deem it necessary and find it um, salient to look at it and decide to assume jurisdiction and grant audience to the parties, then that will be the position. But if in their wisdom they say, no, you don't have a right of audience before this court to review, and we also do not have jurisdiction to review ourselves, then in that instance, the parties will have no choice because the Supreme Court is a court of finality. But I think um, because it's a legal process does not mean it will derogate the fact that there are some policy decisions that will arise from the decision of the Supreme Court. Hence, it will be appropriate to have the Supreme Court look at the facts or the issues that are brought before it that is requesting or causing the request for a review of their own decision. And um, we'll see what comes out of it. All right, Mr. Eno, do you share the same view with your, your fellow legal practitioner there with you? Oh, okay. Um, I, I thank you very much for having me. And um, to add to what my colleague has just said, we have to, first of all, look at the finality of the Supreme Court in our legal jurisprudence. The Supreme Court is the final arbiter in every dispute that arises across the Nigeria, and there has to be some sort of finality in any dispute. So going to, what, going to the Supreme Court for a review is not new to our jurisprudence, but the Supreme Court clearly states grounds with which it can review its decision. And those grounds are clearly stated um, jurisdiction, pay in curiam, and uh, clerical error. So one would, it would be an interesting uh, exercise to watch what grounds these appellants are approaching the Supreme Court to ask for a review of its matter. Like my colleague also said, this decision of the Supreme Court would lead to the development or review of some of our policies with regards to election management, election um, uh, clearance and uh, generally the issue of setting the record straight in terms of qualification, ba um, basic uh, um, qualification for, to, be, to stand for, to be nominated by a political party to run for office. The administration of the electoral process itself is not just the Supreme Court. It's not just the legal, um, uh, the legal system. But Mr. But Eno, I if I may cut in, just to quickly processes. ask you on the case, do, do you think that they actually have a case? They're given several reasons. Uh, going back to the judgment of the Federal High Court, misinterpreted by the Apex Court, disqualifying Mr. Lyon wrongly. Do you think they have a case based on all that you said? Do I think the, the appellant in this matter have a case? If, well, when you go through the judgment of the Supreme Court in the Bielsa State case, one could um, deduce from there that the issue here isn't a post-election matter, it's a pre-election issue. And it has to do with the documents tendered by the validly nominated candidate for the office of the uh, Deputy Governor of Bielsa State. It has nothing to do with the votes earned, it has to do with the certificates tendered, the discrepancies in the names on those certificates, and two affidavits, three affidavits, sorry, to back up this um, certificate. Now, if you juxtapose this with what the Constitution says, on the basic qualification, 
of an individual to be nominated for that office, as well as decided Supreme Court cases on what documents should be tendered. I, I think the, 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 the appellant in this matter you know, didn't uh, uh, abide by the basic rules which has been provided by our constitution and decided right. cases. So going back to the Supreme Court, to me, is uh, asking the Supreme Court to review itself on grounds that they haven't substantiated. Mr. You Kingdom. You have a, a man who has... Um, Hold on uh, one moment. Uh, let, let's, let's quickly hear from um, Mr. Kingdom his view on this, if he really agrees with you. And seeing also that... Um, you know, false information was said to have been submitted um, by Mr. Dege Rimenyo in his CF triple uh, one uh, form that was submitted to INEC. Well, what's your view of uh, the case the APC is bringing forward for the Supreme Court to indeed review the judgment, Mr. Kingdom? Yeah, in as much as I've not seized myself of the um, judgment of the lower court, that is court of first instance, and uh, that of the Supreme Court, but with the fact in public domain which I can deduce, and also knowing um, Senator Degi personally, I will say that um, the miscarriage of justice as it is was uh, occasioned from the court of first instance because um, the, the issue of fair hearing, even as canvassed by the appellant in this instance, is to the fact that he was not given the opportunity to defend himself properly because the issue of forgery has to do with uh, crime and you have to prove beyond reasonable doubt for which that would have necessitated him losing even the senator seat which he occupies if that is proven. But in this instance, everything was modeled up and then thrown up in a civil process. Um, I have known Deggy for over 25 years and I can say for free that he didn't impersonate, neither did he forge those names. There are just complications that are, arose from the process of him changing his name. Particularly the Eremio is a chieftaincy title within the Nembe kingdom. And it's common tradition within the Nembe people that once you're given a chieftaincy title, you are, it's at your discretion to either add it as an appellation to your name. So uh, it's politics. So you can see that even the parties that took him to court know the true fact that he didn't... Uh, so finally, finally and Mr. Kingdom. For impersonation to be proven, mm -hmm. there must be somebody that will bear that name to say, it is my name, it's my document. But well, that is not the case here. Finally, Mr. But, Kingdom, uh, um, we are, we are, Mr. Dige Remenyo, he's, he's named um, some of his primary school teachers who can confirm that he did not forge, uh, forge his certificates. Will he have the opportunity, um, you know, to bring these witnesses before the Supreme Court again? Unfortunately, that is not the case. The Supreme Court does not uh, go on trial afresh on issues. At best, they would have referred the matter back to the lower court for trial, proper trial, but they didn't do that. Because if you look at it in this particular case, the Court of Appeal took a different turn. They, 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 they didn't uphold the decision of the lower court. It is the Supreme Court that went below to the trial court to say, you forged your documents and all of that. So. Um, Let's see what the Supreme Court will say since the appellant has brought a review application before it. I want to believe that um, it will be an interesting episode to, to, to see. Uh, unfortunately, there is some um, challenges this has thrown up in our electoral process as it, with regards to democracy in Nigeria. It, it goes to show that election management still has a lot to 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 desire in terms of changes. Because if INEC were given the powers to screen candidates at uh, a point of nomination, I think this issue at best would have been a, 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 a matter between the applicant and, uh, and uh, INEC. All right, let's quickly hear, because we're, we're running out of time. We must quickly hear from Mr. Eno. I do apologize, Mr. Kingdom. Mr. Eno, and that's your final submissions on uh, what do you think about the merits of this issue? Okay, I, I, in as much as all the parties have every right to approach the Supreme Court to ask for a review, I, I think there are decided uh, cases and uh, rules of court on the finality of the judgment of the Supreme Court. And it's a, a judgment that was given by a, a full panel, I, I, I believe that uh, we should, there should always be an end to a dispute, and uh, uh, both parties should uh, 
go back and um, uh, take a take a, a hard look on where they, they, they where where they made some mistakes. And also, I believe that the institutions of state should take a cue from what the judicial system has put out in terms of highlighting some of the defects in our electoral management system. Right. I, I believe and I I hope that this will these judgments like this would aid in a call to the National Assembly to expedite, on the presidency, to expedite the review of our Electoral Act the, uh, and then, uh, so that we can put most of these discrepancies to rest well, in like terms to of nomination you. of uh, um, candidates, basic qualifications and all that. Thank you so much, Mr. Afonime Eno and also Mr. Besson Kingdom, both legal practitioners. Many thanks for joining us at this time. Still to come on the program, Borno State Governor is making a distressed appeal for 100,000 soldiers to end the war against insurgency in the Northeast. We have more when we return.